This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. Now, a challenging time to be in the healthcare industry. You've got new laws that are coming from Washington, D.C., as well as safety concerns following recalls from companies such as Johnson & Johnson and Sanofi, among others. Well, here to tell us all about what's going on in healthcare and eye care and the direction of his own company, we have the CEO of Bausch & Lomb, Brent Saunders. Brent, good to have you with us on Bloomberg. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Pim. So, first of all, tell us a little bit about what kinds of new initiatives you're taking right now at Bausch and Lomb. And I want to start in a little area maybe people don't know about. We've been talking about technology this week, and you were just describing to me how your, well, one of your departments at Bausch and Lomb was deciding that maybe the eye cleaner, that's the, the, the lens cleaner that Bausch and Lomb has developed would be good for cleaning the screen of an iPad, and it's turned out to be a revenue source. That is correct. In fact, we're focused on finding innovation at Bausch and Lomb anywhere we can. And uh, one of those is exactly that. Our IT department found that uh, they could use the eyeglass cleaner to clean their iPads um, and proposed to Apple, could we put this in the uh, uh, Apple store? And they said, do clinical trials on it, make sure it doesn't penetrate the glass, it hurts the machine. We did all that, and now we're in the Apple store as the preferred cleaner for the iPad. And so do you give the people in the IT department a little bonus for coming up with that? I give them a lot of applause for being innovative and turning a cost center into a revenue center. Uh, every, every CEO's yes. dream, call, turn a cost center into a, a revenue center. Absolutely, and, right. and great, great, great innovation. All right, let's talk about some of the, the revenue centers uh, at Bausch & Lomb, more traditionally, perhaps. Uh, tell me about Crystal Lens, because this has to do with, uh, well, uh, an improvement in the ability for people to deal with cataracts. That's correct, and cataracts is a disease of age, and as you you know uh, our country and our, our society is getting older and so uh, cataracts are seeing higher and higher prevalence. Um, we have a product called Crystallins AO. You may have seen some of our commercials on Bloomberg. Uh, Florence Henderson is our spokesperson and this is an accommodating premium IOL or interocular lens and it's designed to give you near perfect vision after the surgery so you can both read and see at night uh, without glare or halo. It's a very nice product. And what is the innovation that makes this different than competing products, for example? Well, it's the accommodation. So a lot of the interocular lenses give you uh, far distance, not near vision, or they'll give you multi-focality, multi which is kind of like uh, uh, reading glasses. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually an accommodating lens, so it has some movement, and it gives you more of that natural vision that you would expect. Now, tell me what's happening overseas, because we were talking during the, the break about how one of the big sellers in Asia, particularly, are colored contact lenses. They, people want to make their eyes look as though they're from a comic book or a cartoon character. That's correct. In fact, in, in the United States, uh, we've had colored contact lenses. They've been you know, a bit of a fad. They go through periods of being in vogue and, and out. But in Asia, there's a thing called a limbo ring, and uh, it's one of the fastest growing categories uh, of new starts in contact lenses. And you're just right. They're trying to make their pupil of their eye get bigger so that it looks like uh, a Japanese ca character in a cartoon. We are launching a uh, limbo ring in uh, China uh, this spring, and uh, we suspect it will be a big seller. We're very excited about our product there. What about distribution? Is that an issue for a place uh, like China for Bausch & Long? No, we actually entered China in 1982. We were one of the first companies to go to China, and we hold a very strong position in China. In fact, in many parts of China, interestingly, a contact lens is known as a Bausch. Uh, which a Bausch. A Bausch, which is... Uh, uh, a testament to us starting the market there in 1982 and really training optometrists to fit contact lenses for the first time. All right, so you're in the emerging markets such as China and you're a Bauchi there. <laughs> in places like the United States where you describe an aging population, people wanting to improve their eyesight, what can we see in the future in terms of the kinds of eye care and the eye care products that Bausch & Lomb is offering? Right, so we're trying to become the most innovative eye company and we operate in three segments. We operate in vision care, which most people know us about about contact lenses and solutions. We have a pharmaceutical business where we offer ophthalmic uh, eye drops, uh, RX prescription, and OTC medicines or over-the-counter medicines. And then the surgical business we just discussed where we make interocular lenses, uh, equipment, and instruments. Um, and the key thing that we're looking to do is how do you bring new innovation to a category that has a lot of unmet medical need? Um, so on one end, you have contact lens solutions. We just launched a new product called BioTrue. It's a biomimetic contact lens solution that mimics the way your eye produces moisture, and it makes your contact lens a lot more comfortable. So that's one over a period over a period of time. time. You put it in, and over a period you of time, it does that lens. exactly. Yeah, and it's a phenomenal consumer response, and the optometrists love it. 
Uh, we have in our pharmaceutical division uh, a lot of R&D programs. We just launched a new uh, drug that uh, is much needed in the United States for herpatic eye, um, uh, a bad viral condition of your eye. We also have a drug in development called Mapricorat, which is neither a steroid or an NSAID or uh, 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 like a, a leave or something like that. Um, that will work for inflammation, hopefully allergy, and dry eye. Uh, and dry eye is a, a, a very tough condition for And this is a today. condition that you're seeing more and more people have as they get older. That is correct. Uh, most diseases of the eye are either from aging or diabetes. And as we know, those two trends are going uh, up significantly. In now, this some of the challenges that you do face, and I know that you did a voluntary recall of some of your eye solutions, this having to do not with the actual solution, but with the dispenser, right? This had to do with feeling for that there was maybe something at the very tip of the dispenser that, uh, that wasn't supposed to be there? Well, we're still doing an investigation into it, but out of an abundance of caution and my motto and our company's motto of putting patients first, we re voluntarily recalled the product while we, we sorted it out. But in each one of these types of situations, my motto is put the patient first and then learn a lesson from it. So we don't know exactly the cause of what was wrong with this particular product or if there even was something wrong with this product. But, in, but the important thing is we want to make sure we have robust quality uh, controls, that we have a robust manufacturing environment, and we're always putting the patient first. Well, I want to thank you for dropping by and sharing some insights uh, about Bausch & Long. Brent Saunders, thank, thank you, you very much. Appreciate it.